There we go. All right, guys, again, date is the 26th. The topic today is the mole. Sadly, there are chemistry teachers all around the country and in Alpine School District right now that when they teach this subject, they dress up like a really large rodent. It's not cool. And you guys should do this. Go home and Google this. If you Google moles high school activities, you know what the first five things that are going to come up on Google? You will actually find patterns where you can cut out from felt the outline of a rodent and stuff it and turn it into your high school chemistry teacher for credit. Guys, this is not that mole. We are not talking about a crazy little rodent that runs around either as a chemistry teacher or a really sad extra credit project. Guys, we are talking about a concept that you are absolutely going to find fascinating. This is, I love teaching this. I have worked really hard to figure out how to teach you this material. And guys, there's going to be this moment today where you're going to be sitting there going, you have got to be kidding me. And then you're going to start to doubt that you actually understand this concept. And then you're going to go, okay, that's pretty cool. So guys, our goal today is to teach you about the mole. Now here's the trick. For me to teach you this effectively, I have got to bring you to a moment of crisis. So I'm going to tell you right now, guys, in a couple minutes, I'm going to start teaching this to you and I'm going to be lying to you. And guys, some of you are going to be really disturbed at how good of a liar I am because I just told you that I'm going to be lying to you and you're not even going to know I'm lying to you until I go, I'm lying to you. Now, guys, here's the way this is going to go. Eventually, I'm going to have to out myself and go, guys, I'm lying to you. And at that point, if you aren't tracking closely enough, you're not even going to know that I, what the lie is. And if you don't understand the lie, you may not understand this concept. So guys, what I'm telling you is pay attention because I, you need to travel with me towards this lie so that you can then understand the idea. You get the idea? Okay. So guys, here's what we're going to do. What's today? Thursday? Thursday? Okay. So we'll Friday. So the previous Friday. What did we do on Friday? Do you remember? First day of the unit. What did we do? Good. We learned to calculate formula masses. And guys, remember what I told you. Show no work, right? So guys, when you're given a chemical formula, how do you find the mass? You write the little numbers up above the elements, right? And what are those numbers? Masses. Good. They're the masses off the periodic tables in AMUs. Then guys, last time in class, we graded that. We learned to do dimensional analysis. And then you uh, just graded that. And now here, guys, is what's going to happen. We're going to bring both of those ideas together. We, however, have a problem. Um, I don't know if any of you have looked at the calendar, but guys, next week while I'm gone, on Monday, you're going to have more practice over the material that you're going to learn today. Wednesday, you're going to watch a video. Friday, you're going to watch me lecture on the next stuff that you need to learn. Now, guys, here's the problem. Did you notice what you're doing when I get back from Cabo? Back-to-back -back labs. But guys, here's what happened. I can't allow you to go to lab when there's a sub. So guys, really, the two labs that you're going to do when I get back from Cabo should be higher up in the unit. So guys, typically, the way that this should go is today you learn this material, and next class period Monday, you should be doing a lab. But guys, we can't do that because you can't go to lab with the sub. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to tell you a little bit about the lab so that you sort of have an idea of how this all fits together. So guys, with that said, here's what you need to do in your notes, and then I'll tell you about the lab. So guys, in your notes, let's go back and remind ourselves about what Jer and some of the rest of you remember, and actually Alec as well, calculating formula masses. Guys, please do this in your notes. Sodium chloride. We're going back to something simple and familiar just to make sure you remember. So guys, centered in your notes, NaCl, and then just like you did from your homework from last Friday, figure out the formula mass of NaCl. And guys, what's the rule? How many digits do we take off the, decimal, off the, uh, off the table? One decimal. So guys, round to one decimal place, figure out the mass of sodium chloride.
We aren't on like an assembly schedule or anything today, are we? No, good. And so, guys, of course, as you're doing this, you're not thinking to yourself, oh, my gosh, I got to show my work, right? Because what do you know about that? As little work as you possibly can. But, guys, let's talk about the answer. You already got it, right? What's the mass of sodium? 23.0. What is the mass of chlorine to one decimal place? It's 35.45, which rounds to 35.5. And guys, when you add that, and again, you shouldn't show this. I'm just showing you so you can see the work. But guys, in the end, you need 58.5 as the mass of sodium chloride. You guys good? Questions? Okay. Now, guys, relax for a minute, and let me tell you about the lab that you're going to do. Should have been Monday, will be after break, okay? After my break. Um, here's what's going to happen. Guys, you are, well, actually, we should back up. Do you guys remember the precipitation lab that we did where you had all the bottles and you squirted them together and you just wrote down the yeses and the noes if it precipitated? You remember? Okay. Okay. So, guys, here's what you're going to do when I get back from break. Guys, what you're going to do is you're going to redo the precipitation lab, except for instead of giving you bottles with the salts already dissolved in there, I'm, you're just going to be given the solid salts. One of those salts will be NaCl, but you're just going to be given the solid salt. And then, guys, instead of doing this qualitatively and just looking for if a precipitate forms, we're going to do it quantitatively. This is cool. So here's what you're going to do. You guys are going to go into lab, and you're going to be given a vial of NaCl. And then you're going to be given a, a vial of silver nitrate. And it's going to be the crystalline solid. It's really pretty. It kind of looks like snowflakes. And then, guys, what you're going to do is you are going to weigh out some sodium chloride and you're going to weigh out some silver nitrate. And you're going to dissolve that in water and then you're going to mix them together. And when you mix them together, they're going to precipitate. But that's not where you're going to stop. What you're going to do is you're going to separate the precipitate from the water. Now, guys, how could you do that? How could you get the precipitate out of the water? Filter it. Okay, because boiling doesn't work because, guys, there's a, not, there's a soluble salt that's up in the water. So to get just the precipitate, you're going to filter it, and then you're going to lay the filter paper out in an oven, and you're going to dry it out, and you'll weigh the filter paper before. You'll weigh the filter paper after with the product trapped in it, and you're going to figure out how much product it made. Now, in order for this to be meaningful, you need to then figure out how much product you should have made. And the way to know is by knowing how much salt you started with and silver nitrate. So guys, when you go into lab, you're going to take your vial of salt and you are going to weigh this much salt. And then you're going to figure out the mass of silver nitrate and you're going to weigh out that much silver nitrate. That's what you'll dissolve in water and then you'll react it together and do all of that stuff. You get the idea? I'm lying to you. Guys, no. 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 That entire lab that I just described to you is absolutely impossible. You can't do what I just described to you. Can you filter? Sure. Can you dissolve stuff in water? Sure. Can you form precipitates? Absolutely. Trevor, tell me more. Why? Did you hear what Trevor said? Say it again louder. You can't weigh that out. But hold on. We have a balance. The balance, you guys all have a balance. They're nice balances. Like 400 bucks a piece. We have balances and we have salt. So what's the problem? What? You're right. I'm just, I'm playing this. What? Well, but it's numbers, right? We can do numbers. Do you guys understand the problem? 
guys, and sort of, let's make sure you understand the problem. We know the mass of salt, 58.5. But guys, the problem is, is we're not thinking about the units. And it's really cool that Trevor picked this up and maybe so did some of the rest of you. Guys, we know the mass of salt, 58.5. But guys, that's 58.5 atomic mass units. And what is an atomic mass unit the mass of? Do you remember? It's the mass of a proton. So guys, if this isn't clicking with you, don't write this down. That is the mass of an atomic mass unit. It's 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th kilograms. If that doesn't make sense to you, guys, let me do it this way for you. How much is 58.5 atomic mass units of salt? It's that much. Guys, converting atomic mass units to grams, that is how much salt I told you to go and weigh in lab. I said, hey guys, good news. We're going to go into lab and we're going to weigh out some salt. And 58.5 atomic mass units of salt is this much salt. You can't do that. Now, guys, here's the problem. Some of you may have a misconception floating around in your head about how much salt we're talking about. So, guys, let's be really clear about this. If you put some salt in your hand, do you guys understand that one grain of salt is not a molecule of salt? that there's like a bajillion molecules of salt in each of one of these little grains. And so guys, when we are weighing out 58.5 atomic mass units of salt, that is so little salt that there's absolutely no way, it's that much. You see the problem? By the way, guys, you will actually do the lab, oh, sorry, you will do the lab I described to you. Uh, we're not going to do it after I get back from Cabo. We're going to do it in March, and we're going to do it a little differently, but you will do that lab. So, guys, you all do, of course, understand the problem that, that we just created, right? Okay, so, guys, what I need you to do is I need you to hand your periodic tables to the aisle, and we're going to go take these back because these are worthless. Because, guys, all of the masses on this periodic table are in what units? Atomic mass units. And guys, those numbers, while they're red and pretty, are completely worthless to us. Why are they worthless to us, Trevor? Because they're too bloody stinking small. And guys, chemistry is not a theoretical subject. It is a hands-on subject. And we can't get hands-on with 58.5 atomic mass units of salt. So you may as well just put your periodic tables away because they're worthless. Or we can fix them. You guys ready to fix them? Okay, so guys, let's fix them. Don't write down anything that's about to come up on the next slide until I tell you to. This is going to get a little ridiculous. Stay focused, because ridiculous is going to lead you somewhere really interesting. So guys, if you do not understand the fundamental problem, the fundamental problem is this. When we talk about the mass of salt, 58.5 AMUs, that is one sodium atom bonded to one chlorine atom, and we can't weigh that. So what do we need to do in order to fix the problem? Well, guys, the answer is we need to get more salt. Does that make sense? So guys, if we are talking about, remember this is what salt looks like, if we're talking about one sodium and one chlorine and we can't weigh that, in order to be able to weigh it, we need more. The question is, how much more? You ready? Don't write this down, but check this out. So guys, here's what we already know. One NaCl, that has a name. We call that one. And one NaCl weighs 58.5 atomic mass units, which is equal to this in grams. And guys, that is not enough salt to be able to weigh it, right? So what do we need to do to have enough salt so that we can weigh it? We need more. How much more? Well, guys, check this out. If we can't weigh one molecule of salt, what if we get 12 molecules of salt? Okay, now guys, the first thing that you need to understand is that 12 has a name, right? What do we call 12? A dozen. So guys, what if we get a dozen 
molecules of salt. Will that weigh more than one? Yeah, how much more? 12 times more. Aha. So how can we figure out, and again, this is ridiculous, play along. Guys, what will then the mass of this be? Well, 12 times that, right? Which is 702. Now we're talking, right? Oh, baby. What does 702 atomic mass units look like in grams? This. <laughs> not enough. So guys, 12 is clearly not enough. So let's take off the kid gloves and let's get more. A dozen's not enough. Two dozen's not enough. Three dozen's not enough. Guys, let's get a dozen dozen. Do you guys know that a dozen dozen has a name? It's called a gross. For those of you that grew up, oh, Shui will know this. She used to live in Wyoming. Guys, <laughs> bottle rockets and illegal fireworks are not illegal in Wyoming. And in Wyoming, they sell them in packages of a dozen dozen. So you go to Evanston to get your fireworks and you will see big blocks of fireworks in dozens of dozens that are called grosses. So guys, a dozen dozen, which is how many? 12 times 12. 144. Guys, a dozen dozen has a name. It's called a gross. And you guys understand this, right? That sometimes groups have names, like 12 is a dozen and 144 is a gross. We're accustomed to the idea that groups have names. Well, guys, will a gross weigh more than a dozen? Yeah, 12 times more, right? So 12 times 702 is 8,424 atomic mass units. Now we're talking. Yeah. It's that in grams. Not even close, right? Not even close. So guys, here then becomes the question. Don't look away. Here becomes the question. Obviously, dozens and grosses is stupid. That is nowhere near enough molecules of salt to get this to weigh enough that we can weigh it. So guys, the question is this. How many of these NaCLs do we need in order to have enough that we can actually weigh it. And guys, the answer is this, 602 septillion. If you wanna have enough NaCLs that you can actually put them on a balance and weigh them, you need 602 septillion of these things. But guys, just like a dozen is 12 and a gross is 144, 602 septillion also has a name. It's called a mole. So guys, if you have a dozen eggs, how many do you have? 12. If you have a gross of eggs, how many do you have? If you have a mole of eggs, how many do you have? 602 septillion. Guys, it's just a counting group. But guys, check this out. Will 602 septillion weigh more than 144? Yeah. How much more? Guys, watch the board. How much more will 602 septillion weigh in grams? 58.5 grams. Isn't that cool? I love it. It was either Jer or Stephen said it's a perfect, con or it was, he said it's a perfect conversion. And guys, that's exactly what it is. The mole is a perfect conversion. Between what? It is a perfect conversion between the mass of one thing in AMUs and 602 septillion of them will weigh the same in grams. It is exactly the right number of things that if one of them has some mass in AMUs, 602 septillion of them will have exactly the same mass in grams. Isn't that cool? So guys, start writing this down with me. This thing is called a mole. And I love that idea of the perfect conversion. Guys, the mole is the perfect conversion, but it's also just a counting group, just like a dozen or a gross. But guys, it is the counting group that allows us to convert and if you don't like the word directly, use perfectly. I, I'm going to change my notes later. I like that better. It is the conversion 
that perfectly goes from AMUs down to grams. So guys, if you know the mass of one thing in AMUs, you know the mass of a mole of those things in grams. You realize what that did. It fixed your periodic tables. Because now, guys, all of the masses on your periodic table have meaning to us. Because instead of thinking about individual atoms, we're going to think about moles of atoms, and now all of those masses are given in grams. And your periodic tables aren't broken anymore. So guys, what is this magic number 602 septillion? Well, it was proposed by a guy named Avogadro. So we call it Avogadro's number. And guys, Avogadro's number is the number of things in a mole. Now guys, please do not write this down. We could write it out as 602 and then more zeros than anybody would ever want to write down. But all of those zeros are non-significant except for the one trapped between the six and the two. So let's put it in scientific notation and now commit to it. It is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That is why during homework, I reminded you how to use your exponent key because you do not want to be writing down 21 zeros. And even if you wanted to, most of your calculators wouldn't let you enter them. So you need to do it the other way. You guys get the idea? Kind of magic, right? But guys, here's the thing. <laughs> this is fun. Um, okay, we now understand that 12 is a dozen, 144 is a gross, 602 septillion is a mole. And this mole is this magic number that allows us to convert from AMUs to grams. But guys, come on. How big, how big is 602 septillion? Most of us have a really hard time picturing a million. How big is 602 septillion? Guys, please don't write any of this down, but this is interesting. So guys, in order to illustrate for you how big this is, allow me to offer you some examples. Again, don't write them down. These, I got a little creative. Okay, so guys, here's the deal. I don't know if you know this or not, but, and these are not supercomputers that predict our weather. These are the computers that we actually use at home. These computers run at about 8 billion operations a second. That's crazy. A com like a home, like my laptop can count to 8 billion in one second. So guys, how many people are on the planet? About 7 to 8 billion, right? So guys, how long would it take my laptop to count everybody on the earth? One second. You get the idea? If there are about seven to eight billion people on the planet, it would take about a second to count everybody on the earth. Yeah? How long would it take that same computer to count to Avogadro's number? Two seconds. Three seconds? Thoughts? An hour? A week? Five, okay, so five years. 8 billion things a second, 5 years? Come on. Guys, the answer is 2.4 million years. <clears throat> How did I figure that out? Dimensional analysis. But, guys, 2 point... But here's the problem. We can't even picture yesterday. 2.4 million years is also wasted on this. So then I decided to get a little whimsical. You ready? Imagine a mole of raindrops. I should have made it a mole of snowflakes, but... So guys, a mole of rain... If you have a mole of raindrops, how many do you have? 602 septillion. Guys, how big would the bucket need to be to contain a mole of raindrops? Would it fill my sink? Would it fill a swimming pool? Would it fill a gym? Would it fill the filled house? Oh, guys, check this out. A mole of raindrops. If you wanted to build a tank that could hold a, mil of, a mole of raindrops, you would need to build a cylinder 100 feet across. 
and that cylinder would go to the sun and back 140 times. One way, 280, it would go out and back. You'd have to build 140 of them to the sun and back to contain a mole of raindrops. So guys, what about this? This one's my favorite. I, I did the math. Airsoft pellet. So guys, if you had a mole of BBs, if you had a mole of airsoft pellets, if you had a mole of these, how many do you have? 602 septillion. How big of a container would it take to house a mole of airsoft pellets? Fill the room? Fill the field? Fill the school? Fill Lavelle Edwards Stadium? And the Marriott Center? Oh, yeah. Guys, I struggled to come up with, even going to the sun and back is ridiculous, right? What does that mean? So I tried to do something that would make this relative to us. So you ready? In order to conceptualize a container big enough to hold 602 septillion BBs, take the state of Utah and fill it and turn it into a Tupperware container. Build a wall around it, a la President Trump, Flatten the mountains, fill in the valleys, make the bottom completely flat, and build walls around Utah. Guys, a mole of BBs would bury the state of Utah 253 feet deep. Can we do one more? Okay. So, guys, last one. Again, are you getting comfortable with the idea that the mole is a huge number and are you getting comfortable with the idea that no matter what it is, whether it's raindrops, BBs, or people, it's always 602 septillion. You good? Okay, now check this one out. Let's bring this back to class. Chemistry. Carbon. Carbon atoms. Guys, if I have a mole of carbon atoms, how many do I have? 602 septillion. How big would the container have to be to contain 602 septillion carbon atoms? Right there. Guys, that's it. If these atoms were as big as BBs, they would bury the state of Utah 253 feet deep. Kind of gives you a sense of how small atoms are. Now, guys, if these are carbon atoms, the question is, and they are, this is graphite, how did I know that there are 602 septillion carbon atoms in here? Did I stay up last, late, late last night and count them? No, 2.4 million years if I set my laptop on it. So, guys, how did I know that this is 602 septillion carbon atoms? I weighed it. Because carbon has a mass of 12 grams per mole. That's what that number on your periodic table means. So guys, this is a mole of carbon. This is 602 septillion carbon atoms. And I know that because it has a mass of 12 grams. Do you get the idea? Okay. So guys, in order to help you make sense of what we just talked about, here's what I need you to do. We are now going to, and don't write this down until I tell you to, we're going to now talk about carbon atoms. So let's make sure you're clear on this. Guys, if I have one atom of carbon, you okay with the idea that that weighs 12 AMUs? Now, what if I have a mole of carbon atoms? Well, guys, that weighs 12 grams, and that contains 602 septillion carbon atoms. Does that make sense? So now, guys, let me throw you a curveball. Two moles. This is two moles of carbon. So if this is two moles of carbon, what's it weigh? 24 grams. And how many atoms of carbon are in here? Double this, right? 12, just double it. Guys, it's this. Two moles of carbon weighs 24 grams, 12 times 2. And two moles of carbon contains 12.04 uh, times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms because it's 6.02 times 2. You get the idea? Guess what you just did? All of the math that you're going to do in this entire unit. Because that's it. All that we are going to do is this. We're going to take moles and we're going to convert to grams. And we're going to take moles and we're going to convert to atoms. Now, guys, look at how we did that. 
In order to go from moles to grams, we need the mass off the periodic table. In order to go from moles to atoms, we need Avogadro's number. But guys, does this look familiar? It kind of looks like this. Grab that sheet that I gave you. If you don't have the sheet, scratch this into your notes. If you would like the sheet later, you can grab one as you leave. So guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start in the middle at moles. We're going to go to particles. We're going to go to mass. So guys, what are the things that count as particles? Well, that would be atoms, molecules, and formula units. And then we're also going to go to mass and grams. Do you see how that connects to what I just showed you? Moles of carbon, grams of carbon, atoms of carbon. I'll help you make the connection better in a minute. But guys, there's one other conversion that I'm going to share with you that's a little out of left field, but we're going to write it down down here. Gas volumes. So guys, these gas volumes will be in liters or decimeters cubed, and those are the same thing. So guys, this conversion chart that you're about to put together is going to be a wonderful tool for you. We're going to refer to it as we start solving problems. You will not have it on the test. So wean yourself from it as quickly as you can. So guys, if we're in moles and we want to go to particles, how many particles are in a mole? Avogadro's number. That's the conversion. <clears throat> if we are in moles and we want to go to mass, we need the mass off the periodic table, which is called the formula mass. And then, guys, this gas volume thing, I'm just going to give it to you. If you want to go from moles to the volume of a gas, the conversion is 22.4 liters per mole. So if you have a mole of gas, that gas will have a volume of 22.4 liters. It's about 11 two-liter bottles. All right. So guys, we're going to start doing some conversions. We're going to start doing some dimensional analysis. We're going to start doing some math. But guys, let me make sure that you understand the connections. Did you get all that done? Guys, here's what I want you to do. Take that sheet of paper that you're writing on right now and sister it together with your notes. Or maybe you didn't write this down. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Did you guys write down this? Okay, if you didn't, that's fine. But guys, look at the connection. You've got moles, you've got mass, you've got atoms. And guys, if, and I'll do it, I'll slide this in. If I slide this in from the bottom, you'll notice it lines up. Here's moles, here's mass, here's particles. So to get from moles to mass, we need the formula mass, which in the case of carbon was 12. If we want to go moles to particles, we need Avogadro's number, which was right here. Now, guys, again, the logic made sense. Now we're going to apply it in some unique circumstances. So, guys, write these down with me. Question one is this. What is the mass of 2.3 moles of NO2? So guys, this is where we're going to figure out if you really figured out how to do dimensional analysis. You didn't ask any questions while we were grading homework, which tells me you know how to do this. We'll see. So guys, here's the way this goes. We're going to go through the steps. Step number one is set a goal. What are we solving for? Well, it says, what is the mass? What are our units for mass? Grams. So guys, oh, hold on. I forgot my writing utensils. So guys, in order to do this, we need, that's going to sound really good on the screencast. Um, guys, in order to do this, we need a goal. And bringing this in, our goal is grams. But guys, it's not enough to just say grams. It is grams of NO2. Now, guys, from there, we need a starting point. So what do we know about the NO2? 2.5. You guys ready for this? This is really sad. The abbreviation for mole, drop the E. It's 
hardly an abbreviation. 2.3 moles of NO2, and then guys, we draw a line. Now, we've got a starting point, we've got a goal. So guys, join me and check out the logic. We are starting in moles and we are going to grams. Starting in moles, going to grams. So guys, if we are starting in moles and going to grams, where are we starting in this, this chart? Left, middle, right, or bottom? Starting in moles, and which direction are we going? Right, down, or left? We're going to the right. So guys, this is the conversion we're making. So what is our bridge to get there? The formula mass. So we need the formula mass in order to do this conversion. So then, guys, we go back here, and it's time for us to figure out the formula mass of NO2. That was Friday's homework. Now, guys, here's the trick. How many decimal places do we take off the periodic table? Not anymore. Here's the rule. It's now about significant digits. So here's what you do, guys. Look right here. How many significant digits are in 2.3? Two. That's how many you've got to take off the periodic table. With one exception, with one little rule. You never take less than a decimal place. So you'll always take one decimal place and more if you need to because of the significant digits in your starting point. So guys, look at nitrogen. What is its mass? 14.0 right? So that's 14.0. What is the mass of oxygen? 15.99, now whatever, rounds to 16, double it. That is 32.0. So guys, when we add that up, I get 46.0. But guys, the units for that are grams per mole. So guys, what goes on the bottom? One mole or 46 grams, so it cancels. One mole. So we go one mole of NO2 is 46.0 grams of NO2. Moles cancel. You're left with grams, so you're done. That's all there is to it. So you've got 2.3 multiply that by 46. Guys, I get 105.8. But how many significant digits do we get? We've got two here. How many do we have here? Three. So we get two. So that would be, I got 105.8, but that rounds to 110 grams. So guys, the new thing that you picked up here is that these formula masses that you're calculating are the mass in grams for one mole. So we're going to say one mole is this many grams. Moles goes on the bottom, so it cancels top to bottom. You see how we've been building up to this for the last couple of class periods? Sort of a process. You guys okay? Questions? We're going to do two more. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good. Are you pointing at this? Yeah, so if there's two significant digits here. Okay, so there's a difference between the way we should do this and the way we are going to do it. When you get to college and take chemistry, your professors will tell you, take as many significant digits off the periodic table as are on your starting point. So technically, all that we needed to take from the periodic table was 14 and 32 because those are both two significant digits. When I was in college, and actually interestingly, when Miss Call was at UVU getting her chem degree, we both had professors that said, take, two, take the right number of significant digits, but never less than one decimal place. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll show you an example of where you need more, but never less than a decimal place. So that's, that's the scoop. You guys good? Okay, two more, you guys. Try this one. Reads like this, 25 grams of water. I'm going to approximate about 25 grams of water. 
So guys, that is about 25 grams of water. The question is, how many water molecules are in this beaker? The question says, how many molecules are water in 25 grams of water? What's our goal? How many, how many, how many molecules? So guys, our goal is H2O's. Now we need a starting point. What do we know about this water? 25 grams. So we've got 25.0 grams of water. And then we draw a line. So now, guys, the same game. Where are we starting? Where are we going? We're starting in grams. We're going to molecules. Starting in grams, going to molecules. Starting in grams, going to molecules. So where are we starting? Right, left, middle, bottom. Starting in grams, going to all the way over there. But guys, we can't do this in one hop. It's a two-step process. We've got to go grams to moles and then moles to particles. So it's a two-step process. We need the formula mass and then we need Avogadro's number. So coming back then to this, if we are starting in grams, we've got to go to moles and then moles to molecules. So guys, we need the formula mass of water. So now check this out and you'll see this thing about significant digits. So guys, let's do this. How many significant digits in 25.0? Three. So we need at least three significant digits off the periodic table. So guys, what is the mass of hydrogen to three significant digits? 1.01. Do you see it? Now we need that additional decimal place. So 1.01 times 2 is 2.02. .02. Now, we need oxygen, which is 16.0, and that gives us three significant digits, and that adds up to 18.02. Grams equals one mole. So now, guys, what goes on the bottom? Does the 18.02 grams go on the bottom, or does the one mole go on the bottom? grams because it's got to cancel top to bottom, right? So guys, we've got 18.02 grams of water is one mole of water. Does that make sense now with the significant digits? You good? Okay. So guys, why did we put grams on the bottom? So it cancels. So now we're in moles. Are we done? No, we want to be in molecules. So now guys, we got to take that last hop. How many molecules are in a mole? 12? No, that's a dozen. How many are in a mole? 602 septillion. So guys, what goes on the bottom? The 602 septillion or the one mole? One mole. So one mole of water is 602 septillion in scientific notation. Thank goodness, waters. Now guys, we do the math. We go 25. We divide that by 18.02, then we multiply that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And now guys, let's do significant digits. I'll let you catch up because this is important. How many significant digits in 25.0? Three. What about 18.02? Four, one, two, three, four. What about Avogadro's number? It's not perfect. It's actually three. If you look it up online, you'll see Avogadro's number out to like 10 decimal places. This is not perfect. It's only three. So we've got three and four and three. So that means we get three. So guys, I get 8.35 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. You guys good? We're going to do one more. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, really good question because it seems unnecessary, right? Guys, the question is this. Do we really have to write the waters? And you're just going to have to trust me on this. The answer is yes, because what you're going to find 
at the end of February, as we start getting into March, you will not be starting and ending with the same substances. It's going to switch in the middle of the problem. And if you're not identifying the substances, you're going to get all funkified. So yeah, you're going to want to do that. Okay, guys, let's do one more and let's get you uh, working on other stuff. Guys, what about this? What is the volume of 12.45 moles of Bunsen burner gas? So guys, if you have a mole meter, and if you opened up the Bunsen burner tap, and if you dispensed 12.45 moles of CH4, which is Bunsen burner gas, how big would the balloon be? So guys, what are we solving for? What is the volume. And guys, our units for volume are liters of CH4. Now, what do we know about the gas? Well, we know we've got 12.45 moles of CH4. Draw a line. And now let's talk. Where are we starting? Moles. Where are we going? Liters, good, you're even pointing to the bottom. That's awesome. Guys, we're going liters to gas volume. And if we're going liters to gas volume, or I'm sorry, no, 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 I'm sorry. If we're going moles, sorry, we're starting in moles and going to gas volume. So guys, if we're starting in moles and going to gas volume, it's this one step. And you need to know that, well, you don't need to memorize it. I'll give it to you. But guys, one mole of gas is 22.4 liters. So it's about 11 two liter bottles. So we're gonna use that conversion. So we're gonna hop over here. And guys, we know that one mole of gas is 22.4 liters. So what goes on the bottom, the mole or the liters? Mole. So one mole of gas, in this case CH4, is 22.4 liters of CH4. And then guys, we do the math. We've got 12.45 times 22.4. And we get what? Four significant digits, three significant digits. So that would be 279 liters. How you guys doing? Okay, now guys, here's the hazard. You're looking at these and you're giving me the thumbs up and you're going, I'm good. Because understand, you have no idea if you're good because you've never done one of these. You've watched me do three and I make them look really easy. Because I've been doing this for the better part of 30 years. You've been doing this never. <laughs> so you need to practice. Here's the hazard, guys. I'm not going to be here next week. And you are not going to have the opportunity to come in here Monday and ask questions because I'm going to be gone. And guess what's going to happen on Monday? You're going to have a whole nother set of these. Guys, you're going to have, and it's going to be, actually, no, I just need you to leave. Yeah, just, no, just go. Yeah, come back. So, guys, you're going to have a whole nother set of these problems. And they're going to happen in lab. So let me explain to you next week. When you come in on Monday, you will not grade this homework because the sub can't help you. What you will do is you're going to grab uh, periodic tables, ion charts, calculators, and paper, and you're all going to get up and you're going to go to Miss Call's lab. Not my lab, you're going to go through my lab into Miss Call's lab, and in there, you're going to see 15 different stations. And at those stations, there's going to be a sample of a chemical and then a question to answer. And you're going to circulate around all 15 stations. It doesn't matter if you do them in order. And you're going to write down the question and all the information that you need to answer the question. And then you're going to come back in here and you're going to do it as a homework assignment. Now, guys, understand you are welcome to touch everything in there, but please be careful with the mercury. Guys, there is a jar of mercury in there. And this is going to trip out your brain because there's only about this much mercury in the bottom of the bottle. And when you go to pick this up, the only liquid you've probably ever touched is water. And when you go to pick up the jar, your brain is going to go, oh, this is water. And you're not going to lift hard enough and you're going to drop it. 
it's amazingly heavy because it's very dense. But then, guys, the other hazard is, is you're going to go, oh, this is going to be heavy. You're going to huck it across the room. So, guys, be careful with the mercury. Do not open any of the bottles. Do not open any of the bottles, but you're welcome to touch things. Then, guys, on Thursday when you come, or on Wednesday when you come in, you're going to watch a video. You will be taking notes. It's in your homework packet. And then Friday, you are going to be watching a screencast of me teaching the next material, and you'll have homework over that as well. So, guys, grab your homework packets right now. We are now doing assignment number three. You have a little bit of time. Let's get the first three done. Do these on another sheet of paper. The answers are on the wall. The answers are posted online. If you would like to talk with me about AP, I would love to do that even now if you'd like. If you came in late, you have an unexcused absence and you have a zero in the grade book. I am going to give you an I and the expectation is you're going to spend pride with me just hanging out, wasting your time. If you choose not to come, you made a bad choice because I will not be able to follow up with you on Monday, but I will make note to myself. And when I see you again the following week, we're going to have an uncomfortable conversation about one, why you don't come to class on time, and two, why you chose to disobey my request to come to Pride. So guys, dig in. I would love to help you. If you would like to talk about AP, come and chat with me. 